in my life there came a time when I had to make a change. You know the things just weren't right. I looked around for someone else to blame. I searched and I searched and I reached out inside. And I knew when I found the light, I can't die. I can be free. I can be free. I can't rise above. I can be free. I can be free. I will rise above. When you are alone. Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Duncan McCollum. Man, I love that song, sung by Tony Lindsay and uh, written by my good friend, Steve Funderburg. And, uh, you know, it's really coming down to uh, you, you know, and you've worked so hard all your life to be able to be free. And you've worked so hard all your life to have uh, family, uh, your friends, and, and have the things that give you joy. And, um, you know, it's so interesting. I'm, I'm going to tell a story about I wasn't here last week, and I was up uh, in the great Northwest visiting, um, go, doing a seminar with Dr. Dan Pompa and the Health Center of the Future Doctors, which was pretty cool. We went to a clinic up there, Dr. Thomas um, Gagina, a medical doctor from Argentina, has an amazing clinic up there that's just the outer reaches of the technology available to help us and you become healthy and get overcome the most ominous odds. And, uh, but as we were up there um, having a good time and also a friend of mine's son got married at the same time, which is cool. So I was able to do both. But um, on the way back, we stopped and visited some friends in a beautiful little town up there. And um, this really struck me about the health legacy that I've talked about for so long. You know, we all have been told to work hard, get a good education, uh, put away for our future, put away for our retirement, and maybe leave something for our kids. But we've never really been taught about our health legacy and how important our health is and how quickly it will disappear if you don't take care of it. It's like that old saying, don't worry about it, it will go away. And um, it does, it's insidious. So there's a couple of things I'm gonna go over today. Number one, uh, one of the things that we are doing in our office right now, which is helping a lot of people, giving them hope where there has been no hope before, um, other than just the masking of the symptoms as the condition slowly um, stole freedoms and um, independence from people, usually elder people, but it can strike anybody. Uh, at any age based on uh, things that you run into in the environment, um, things that go wrong with your body. And the two words that you never want to hear are peripheral neuropathy. And I have talked about that on a previous show, peripheral neuropathy. Um, and, you know, basically the periphery means outside your central nervous system or outside the skeleton of your body. That's called the periphery. And the nerves that come out of there um, go all the way down to the toes, the fingers, and all the organs in your body, and all the muscles, and all of your balance joints, and everything that gives information back to the brain so you can function in life. And the peripheral neuropathy means, apathy means bad condition of, or problem with, and so neuropathy means you have a problem with your nerves. It's so interesting how 
almost all disease just describes the symptom. Arthritis means itis or inflammation of the joint, which is arthro. And um, you can go on and on and on in all these different types of conditions, or it's named after the person that discovered it, like Alzheimer's disease. And um, But this term peripheral neuropathy uh, I am going to um, come back to that. I have a segment of the show where I'm going to um, go through uh, some slides that I have that will be available on McCollum, Dr. Duncan McCollum YouTube after this. And you can always uh, contact my office and we'll send you some information on what can be done. Sure, first of all, what is and what can be done about peripheral neuropathy. But really, what's very interesting about this trip I took, and this isn't unusual, this is very common. Um, however, it kind of struck me because it came very close to home, being friends. And one of the uh, people that we were with has worked hard, went to school, had a great education, got married, um, worked in a very high-end position, raised his family, retired three or four or five years ago, but now he's plagued with a health condition, which is taking away some of his, uh, well, let's just say it's giving him brain fog. Let's say that. And we know the, the condition of that. There's so many reasons that it can come about. Toxicity um, over a lifetime, heavy metals and molds that come down four or five generations through mom's umbilical blood things like glyphosate or Roundup that get sprayed into our environment liberally and gets um, onto the foods we eat, as well as uh, genetically engineered into the grains that we eat. So these things get into our bloodstream, they break down something called the blood-brain barrier, and they get in and damage the brain. They damage the neurotransmitters inside the brain, and they can cause all kinds of problems with memory, mood swings, hormone interruptions, uh, disruption of the complete endocrine system, all of your hormones, feel good hormones, uh, happy hormones, digestive hormones, female, male hormones, um, hormones like your thyroid hormone and or even the pancreatic hormone, which is insulin, which is affecting 60% of the adult population or the population in the United States, which is something called diabetes. When it gets too bad, you have diabetes one, diabetes two, and now diabetes type three, which is Alzheimer's disease and or dementia. So at any rate, uh, we were um, enjoying this weekend or this several days floating on the river, listening to live music, um, playing on you know, electric bikes, uh, garage full of toys, um, really nice cars, two different locations, nicely remodeled house. And as I was talking to this gentleman, and he was not only demonstrating, but showing concerns about his losing track of what he was doing or remembering things. And, you know, we talked about his blood work, uh, the fact that they had him on a statin drug which uh, was lowering his cholesterol. And his cholesterol was, I looked at his blood work, 159, 159. And his brain is lacking. It's basically when we looked at the MRI of his brain, the brain was shrinking. Now that does happen with age. And it said in the notes, maybe progressing more, might be more than normal for someone his age. But the point is that the several points that the cholesterol is what keeps your brain healthy. It's what splashes fat up against the brain, gets through the blood vessels or the blood-brain barrier to get into the brain to help the brain regenerate itself. And the because the brain's made of fat, cholesterol is a substance your liver makes to go repair damaged parts of the body. So it floats around in the bloodstream and it finds a deficient area and it dumps cholesterol there, um, high-density lipoproteins to go and patch up the damaged area, which um, once it has given off a hydrogen, it becomes a low density lipoprotein, what's not a healthy one. And then that gets uh, into the liver, either 
converted to bile and excreted through the large intestine out of the body or recycled, recirculated again by picking up some more hydrogen and other um, amino groups and fatty acid groups to become a healthy um, worker again. They, these high density lipoproteins or the LD or HDLs flow through the body looking for a job. And when they find one, they unload their cargo and become a low density lipoprotein and then go back to the liver to become a high density lipoprotein again. So these, um, these um, cholesterol molecules have a job and that's to keep not only your blood vessels resilient and keep your organs resilient, your, um, and by resilient, I mean flexible. When you get hardening of the arteries, this kind of thing that comes from several issues, including very bad rancid oils that we get in cooking and in the processed foods that we get. But the cholesterol, as well as some other factors in the body, are supposed to keep those blood vessels like a nice, healthy rubber band. It can expand and contract. Um, and then if you left a rubber band outside for a while, pretty soon you try to expand it and it just breaks. Well, that's kind of what happens to the blood vessels in the body when they dry up. Cholesterol is so important for this. And yet this gentleman was on a statin drug or two and his cholesterol was down between 150. And it's ridiculous. He needs to have the cholesterol to keep his brain function working. Yet he is demonstrating signs of loss of brain function. And so well, let's talk about cholesterol for a minute. And uh, we can even talk about peripheral neuropathy with having healthy oils in the body and the healthy cholesterol that's going to keep the blood vessels at the tips of your toes resilient. But um, so back when I graduated from chiropractic school somewhere in 1989, I think, you know, the, the normal cholesterol level, which was acceptable, was 249. Anything over 249 was considered high. And of course, you have to remember that when you're looking at cholesterol by yourself, if you're not taking into account the triglycerides, which is the fat in your blood, then you're not really looking at a whole picture. And when you don't have a whole picture, you can't make a clinical decisions of any weight, right? So this gentleman's triglycerides were in the 70s which is a really nice low triglyceride. So he's got a very low cholesterol, very, very low triglycerides, and his brain's drying up. Wow. So, you know, back again, when I graduated from chiropractic school, it was 249. And then all of a sudden, with the advent of statins and the fact that 70% of all medicine in this country is used to handle symptoms. All of a sudden, somebody in their great wisdom, without taking into consideration the triglyceride count or the cholesterol count or the combination of the both, as well as other factors in the individual genetic factors and such, decided to lower the cholesterol number to 224. Well, guess what? When you lowered the cholesterol, uh, healthy cholesterol, quote unquote, from 249 to 224, there was millions of new recipients of statin drugs. Now, statin drugs lower your cholesterol, but they also lower your A1C, excuse me, your, um, your uh, I'll think of it in a minute. There we go. Coenzyme Q10, which is what is inside the power plant of every cell in your body, specifically the heart, because the heart has more mitochondria than just about any uh, cell in the body. So, but the statin drug not only lowers cholesterol through your body, but it damages the actual uh, power plant of the cells of your heart. And um, so, at any rate, when you take from 249 to 220, Four, imagine how many more people were now being prescribed cholesterol medication or statins. Now, guess what? About five or 10 years later, they went, huh, what if we lower, and there was no change in heart rate, heart attacks, no change in strokes. Uh, heart attacks are still the number one, or heart disease is the number one cause of death in this country today. 
um, cancer number two, strokes is number three, along with uh, prescription drug um, death by properly prescribed um, prescription drugs and accidents. All those three are kind of tied for third. So guess what they did? They decided a few years later to raise, to lower the cholesterol to 199. Hmm. Wow. So now we're down to 199. And um, so anybody with any cholesterol over 200 was, you know, advised to take um, these, these statin drugs. Now, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not telling you to take or not take it. I'm just giving you the history of the level of cholesterol and where it's going. So now it was lowered down to 199. And then, of course, anybody over that number more than likely was prescribed cholesterol meds. So now those cholesterol are taking the meds or taking the cholesterol out of your body so you don't have enough um, rolling around to patch up the holes, keep everything flexible, repair your brain, and do everything that's necessary to keep your body young and resilient. Every cell in your body has fatty acids in it that comes from those cholesterol molecules or make up them. So, uh, yeah, you guessed it. Next, we know it's down to 174 is considered normal. And this gentleman's cholesterol was 159 or something like that. And he's still on a statin drug. And his triglycerides are down to 77. And his brain on MRI is drying up. The solaces of the things that those little lines you see between it are widening because the brain is shrinking. So what sense does that make? Okay. Now there's several, several things that can cause um, problems with brain function. And it's not just cholesterol. That's just happened to be when we looked at the uh, blood work, that's what we saw, as well as the MRI that he had an MRI in March and they weren't going to read it for him until November, and he's afraid he might have a brain tumor. Well, guess what? March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Eight months later to get that um, test read. What's going on in the mind of a patient if they don't know the results of a very expensive test that you get in for an hour and it makes loud noises the whole time? You know, at any rate, it was kind of crazy. So, Here's, here's the thing that was even more bizarre to me. As we talked and I talked about, you know, it's actually not bizarre. I know it to be true. I know it to be the standard of the way people think about their health in this country. And that's one reason we're rated 47th in the world for health, because of what I'm going to go through here, okay? So, and another reason that we take 50 to 70% of all the prescription drugs made in the world, and we're only 4% of the world population. So 4% of the world population take 50 to 70% of all the drugs, depending on the article you look at. We're still rated 47. Nothing's changed in our health across the globe. We're the most obese country in the world. 60% of us are diabetic or pre-diabetic. 30 million of us are diagnosed with thyroid disease. Who knows how many aren't? And, you know, so um, it's, it's bizarre what when you're going down the path, trying to survive day to day, pay your bills, raise your family, um, listen to what the media is telling you. There's only two countries in the world that can advertise drugs on the on the TV. And, uh, you know, that's I remember when they started doing that every two out of three commercials is a drug commercial telling you to tell your doctor about that you want to take this drug. And you should also tell your doctor if you have heart disease, liver disease, glaucoma, um, bleeding areas of your body, right? And if you're already allergic to the product they're trying to sell you, you should tell your doctor that. So at any rate, why are we rated 47th and why aren't things changing? So let's get back to this, this story with this guy and this cholesterol being so low and he's still on a statin drug. And he's very concerned about losing a grip. And he's only been retired for maybe five years. <clears throat> he's got all the toys in the world. He's got a beautiful house in Southern California and a beautiful house up in the mountains of, of Oregon. And he just, I know, got done remodeling that house and he put a lot of money into it, I'm sure well over a hundred thousand bucks, probably more. 
And I know that they've got a beautiful house down south that he probably bought several years ago and put a lot of money into remodeling that house. He has very expensive toys, cars, um, things to play on the water with. But when it came down to looking at his health and really discussing what was going on and actually diving into the, the um, blood work and the MRI and the what's going wrong with our healthcare system. And I was explaining to them that in order to get his health back and enjoy everything he worked so hard to create, all these beautiful things he has, he's going to have to think outside the box in order to achieve the enough health to enjoy it because he's only in retirement five years, you know, in 10, 15 years, he'll be 80. And, you know, but what joy is it if you don't, can't remember it or you can't use it? And it's not just the memory. It's the other thing. The peripheral neuropathy falls into the same category. If you are looking for the system to fix you, then look at the track record of the system and decide whether you need to stay in it or do something different. So I, I you know, felt pretty comfortable on, on talking to him about the fact that insurance is not going to pay for him to get his health back. And I threw out a number and said, you know, it's going to cost X amount of thousand dollars just to get your life back. You know, you're going to have to um, detoxify your body. You're going to have to change your diet. You're going to have to do uh, different things in order to bring the brain health back um, and things along this line. And he looked at me and he goes, well, insurance doesn't cover it. And I go, no, it doesn't. He goes, well, I'm not going to pay for it. I went, huh. And I didn't think of this at the time, but I did on the way home. I went, wow, did insurance pay for your remodel? Did the insurance pay the hundred plus thousand dollars to remodel your house? Did the insurance pay for all those toys in your garage that allow you to float on the water and move up and down the streams? Did insurance pay for those electric bikes, all those different vehicles that you drive? No. Well, why did you not, why didn't you just say insurance isn't going to pay for my lifestyle? So I'm not going to have a lifestyle. But when it comes down to enjoy the lifestyle that you've developed over the years because of the money that you spent, you won't spend a penny on your health because insurance won't cover it. It just has, makes no sense to me. We know that insurance isn't going to cover things. There are people that go out and spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars on their nails and on their hair and on their clothes, but they won't spend a penny on their health because insurance doesn't cover it. Well, it's not going to cover it. And, you know, if it does, it's going to only cover up the symptoms more than likely. It's not there to get you well. So if you want to get well, you're going to have to think outside of the box or just go down the road of the rest of the United States being the fact that. 80 million Americans have multiple chronic diseases, according to Michigan State University. Um, you know, when I was a kid, 6% of the kids had autoimmune diseases. Now, 50% of the kids do. 50% of the kids are obese. When I was a kid, it was 6%. So, you know, I, I'm sorry to preach to the choir here, but I got it. You know, if, if you want to be and stay healthy, you know, then you've got to do the things that are going to get you there. Um, you know, I'm 67 years old. I was talking to my daughter today and I said, look, you know, in 12 years, I'll be 80. What, what kind of life do I want in 12 years? That's not very long, right? In comparison to how long I've lived so far. And, you know, I'm, I'm working to be able to enjoy my twilight years. I want to be able to get out and still hike and walk and swim and go up into the Sierras and, and do all those fun things, let alone entertain and enjoy life with those who I love. Um, but if my health is dwindling and I can't get around and I'm in pain, I'm never going to enjoy that stuff. So I'm sorry to go off on this for so long today, almost half of my show, but I think it's that important for you to realize that take stock of your health, take stock of where you are, and then decide, is this if I don't change the trajectory of this, where am I heading? Am I happy where I am now? So you're probably not listening to the show. You know, is there some things that I could do to become healthier? 
Uh, great. I have a, a plaque on the wall in my consultation room by Hippocrates that says, before you can uh, make a decision to help anybody, you've got to ask that person if they're willing to change the things that got them sick in the first place. So, and I show that to many, many people. Uh, that a lot of people come in with, and especially these days, with pretty off-the-rail health conditions that have been degenerating for a long time. And perhaps they've um, not uh, paid attention to those insidious um, clouds as they floated over the, the body of health and to a point where they couldn't ignore them anymore. And they realized, wow, it is happening to me. This is real. There's something that I can do about it, I hope, still. And they come into my office and you know, I can tell they're going, I've tried everything. I Is there anything you can do? And I, I said, well, guess what? You came to the greatest physician who ever lived, but you're not looking at him. I'm looking at you. The greatest physician who ever lived lives inside of you. So you came to the right place because I'm going to help you ignite that wizard of health, that wizard of physician inside your body. We're going to do this by eliminating if we can, and if you're willing, because if you're not, it doesn't matter, but we're going to help you eliminate the three stressors on your life that have got you where you are today or, or are heading you down the path of no return. And peripheral neuropathy, which is, you know, the other side of the physical side, things like dementia are on the opposite side. And then you have all of the other things that ruin our health in between. You know, all, all chiropractors do and all I do is help remove interference from the body. We call the subluxation. And there's three types. There's a the subluxation of a physical sort, which could be on the nerves of the spine or different communication cycles of the of the um, nervous system. There's the chemical subluxation. Sub means less than and luxation means light. So our condition of light. So sub means there's less condition of light. Back in the day, they used to believe that light sh shone through the body and you were health healthy, I'm talking to 2000 years ago. And when the darkness got into your body, it was sinister and that was death or that was sickness. So the term subluxation means less than light in the body. And that's what chiropractors specialize in, turning on your body's ability to heal itself by restoring communication as much as possible, and then eliminating the things that could be blocking that communication, being it things like pinched nerves, scar tissue, damaged cells, um, and then in the body, anytime when you have uh, organs that are overloaded because the nervous system wasn't able to keep the body functioning well, things like your liver that get overclogged and can no longer um, filter out the toxins out of your blood. And then it becomes like a dirty vacuum filter. You can vacuum and vacuum and vacuum. And all you do is heat up the vacuum till it blows up. So when your detoxification systems in your body are not working well, then pretty soon the vacuum will blow up. And that vacuum being your body and your health. So the other thing that we work on is helping eliminate or first restoring your body's what we call downstream pathway so it can start to uh, clean itself and eliminate itself remember the greatest musician i mentioned a minute ago whoever lives lives inside of you so we've got to help it we've got to give it a helping hand so we're going to start to eliminate uh, um, or give it the uh, resources it needs to start to clean out what we call the downstream pathways your body detoxifies in five ways the large intestine, which is the byproduct of liver filtration, will dump stuff into the large intestine and then also do something to a certain bad chemicals in the blood and send it off to the, the kidneys so the kidneys can now detoxify it. It couldn't do it until the liver did its job. Now the kidneys can urinate out toxins. Your skin will push out toxins through the oil glands and sweat. Your lungs will get rid of toxins through the gases that are um, pushed out of the lungs through that process. And then the fifth one is a positive mental attitude. So the fifth way of detoxifying your mind is to 
know that you can and know that you have a reason or a purpose. And, you know, that's that thing about, no, I can't help you if you're not ready to be helped and you're not going to change the way you think about things. Because I had talked about an individual, great guy, love him. But his viewpoint is, if insurance isn't going to pay for me to detoxify my body or to fix the problems with my um, blood uh, so that my brain can become healthier, then I'm not going to do it because insurance isn't going to pay for it. Okay, well, there you go. Um, you know, but yet at the same time, you turn around and spend 20 times what it would cost to make your house pretty so that you can live in it, although you won't even remember where you left your keys, you know? Or it's just, it's bizarre to me. We have to wake up. You have to wake up and realize that it's, if you want to be and stay healthy, it's up to you. So that's so important. I'm going to flip over for a minute here and I'm going to go into the, uh, just the thought of peripheral neuropathy. And I'm going to talk about that because so many people have it. I'm going to share my screen. So at this point, anybody um, who is, uh, going to watch this later, can go to my uh, YouTube channel, Dr. Duncan McCollum, and you'll be able to see the slideshow. You don't need to, because I'm going to talk through it. But let's see, I'll get to the first slide here. And this is something that I, I talked about this in a class or a group that I'm part of. And the first slide says, my dear friend, and this is a... Um, a a story I hear too often, and it's a story that when you're in my type of um, profession, you hear it, and it saddens you, but you know that you're going to hear it over and over and over again. And all you can do is hope that what you do or say might give the person the chance to make that decision to change what got them where they are today, because what got you here won't get you there. So if you're happy where you are, this ain't for you. This show's not for you. But if you want to draw a line in the sand and go, I want to be healthier. I want to see my grandchildren. I want to be able to go to their sports shows. I want to be able to walk up and down stairs in this beautiful house that I've remodeled. I don't necessarily want to put a, a jimmy lift so that I can be carried up three stairs to get to the second level. I want to be able to enjoy myself in the yard. I want to go out and garden without the fear of falling and breaking my hip or falling and knocking my head and slipping at night because I don't know where my feet are when I'm trying to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night or being afraid to drive a car because I'm not really sure if I know that my feet are on the brake or on the gas. These are the conditions of peripheral neuropathy that are so insidious and they're stealing people's lives and everybody's afraid to talk about it because you know it's a, a basically a death sentence of freedom. Because if your son or daughter knew you were having it, they're going to take your driver's license away. And with that goes your independence. And once you start to lose your ability to function and move around freely, then you're going to need to have assisted living. And this is not a fun place to be, especially if you can see the signs coming and know that something can be done about it. And something can be done about it if we catch it in time and if you decide you want to make it go right. Of course, there's a lot of things to come into play there, but we're going to go through that. So this is a letter that is not too uncommon that is written to those you love. My dear friend, I'm not really sure when I first noticed it, nor what it was I did notice. All I remember was that one day there was just this feeling of foreboding over me, kind of like I was doomed. At first, it would fade in and out, and I wasn't really sure. Well, I didn't want to believe it was really there. I think I was trying to will it away. It didn't work. That was three years ago, and now it seems my worst dreams have come true. Now it's with me every day. When I wake up, even if I sleep, I spend a few minutes taking stock, hoping it might magically have gone away. Well, that is what I did for a while, but now it's part of me every moment and it won't go away. So that's a message that I hear way too often. And uh, perhaps you've noticed that with you or your friends or your loved ones. 
and it could take on many faces of ill health. Uh, the one that I start, I have two things I'm talking about, of course, is the mental capacity. But again, the two words that you don't want to hear or you never want to hear regarding this is the term peripheral neuropathy. Peripheral means outside of, and in this case, it's outside of your nervous system. And neuropathy, neuro means nerve, and pathy means a condition of or a disease of. So peripheral neuropathy clinically means damaged peripheral nerves. 25 million Americans have been diagnosed with peripheral neuropathy. And that's really wild because that's only the ones diagnosed. Millions and millions more have no clue. It starts so insidiously. It might be a little numbing on the toe, might be cold toes or hands when you go to bed at night. Could be that the um, sheet on your feet is irritating you and keeping you awake. It might be that your hands or feet go numb, or perhaps you don't know where your feet are at all times. Maybe it's difficult, more difficult to drive or you're dropping things or you feel like you have a tight band around your ankles, or like there's a rock in your shoe and you just can't get it out. All these types of things are signs that the nerves are giving improper communication back and forth from the brain to the body. So you have your central nervous system, which is the brain, brain stem, and the cord that goes down through the center of your spine. Those are all called the central nervous system. Outside of that is the peripheral nervous system, or PNS. There's only 31 pairs of spinal nerves that exit the spine. Yet those 31 pairs of spinal nerves split and split and split until they serve the 75 trillion cells in your body. One very unique nerve is called the vagus nerve. And this nerve exits the brain right at the top of your spine. And rather than going down through the center of your spine, it takes it left and it goes out to the side of your spinal cord and travels all the way down this side. And the key to this, this nerve, the vagus nerve, is it controls all of the involuntary functions of the body. This is why when somebody like um, Christopher Reeves breaks their neck and is a quadriplegic, their, their digestive system still works, their lungs still work, their heart, their liver, their kidney, and all those organs are working. Because where the spine was severed, the vagus nerve had already exited the spine up at the top and was traveling down the side. However, you can still have, and that's called the autonomic nervous system. However, you can still have peripheral neuropathy of those organs from the, that particular nerve. And I will go into that a little bit. So what is peripheral neuropathy? All right, so um, again, peripheral is outside of or around. Neuropathy means pathology of the nerve. Anything that damages the nerves of the body is a neuropathy. Now, there's a, a few different examples. One, it would be aberrant or wrong communications of information and to and from the brain and the body. So this could be you think it's hot, but it's not. Or you have numbness in your toes and you don't realize you're standing on a hot coal from a fire and it's burning your foot and you don't know it. Or that you have a cut on your foot and it is um, getting worse and worse and worse, but those nerves are not working right because it's aberrant. It's um, the wrong communication going back and forth. So there's that kind of peripheral neuropathy. Partial communication also. So this would be the numbness, the tingling, the weakness of the nerves, the weakness of the organs that aren't really working at 100%. It's like turning the light dimmer switch down in your living room because you want a nice, quiet, romantic evening. Well, having the nerves dim, um, dimmed in your body is not uh, nice nor romantic. So this is something that you do not want to let happen. Or when it does happen, you need to be aware of it and find somebody who can specialize in turning that on, hopefully without drugging it, burning it, or cutting it out. The last one is a complete or lack of communication. Now, the good thing about peripheral neuropathy is most of it is reversible. Uh, the one thing about the peripheral nerves is, and I'll go into this, I'll have a slide for it um, later for anybody who wants to get on and watch this on McCollum, Dr. Duncan McCollum um, YouTube, and or you can just email my office or call McCollum Family Chiropractic and they'll send you a link so you can uh, see this in person. I do all my radio shows 
um, on a Zoom meeting so you can uh, revisit it, uh, see it, send it to the people you care about or love. Okay, so the peripheral nerves, again, are all the, the different nerves that come out of this middle of the spine, 31 spinal nerves that go to every cell, organ, and tissue in the body. So every nerve in the periphery of your, or the peripheral nervous system, this isn't, shouldn't, shouldn't surprise you, but every nerve has a specific job. There are sensory nerves that receive sensations such as temperature, pain, vibration, or touch. Of the, from the skin. Now we test those when we're looking for peripheral neuropathy. One of the tests that we do are very sub, several sensory tests so we can find out what your body's telling your brain or not. Motor nerves, these are the nerves that come out of the brain and voluntarily when you decide to walk, those nerves tell those muscles to function in a coordinated effort to get you across the room or jumping a high jump or I don't know if you've watched any of the Olympics, but to do some of those amazing things that are done by those amazing athletes, those are the motor nerves. <clears throat> but you need the sensory nerves to tell you where you are and give you the information of how you're spinning in the, the air and when to put your feet on the ground. So if you have a trouble with that, then let me know. Then there's the autonomic nerves. That's automa automatic you might say, those nerves that control the functions such as blood pressure, sweating, heart rate, digestion, bladder function. And again, that's the vagus nerve. So those are the three major jobs to the peripheral nerves of the body. And again, some of the symptoms that you get, I'm going to go through a list of them here because, you know, some of them are so insidious that if you catch them early, it's all has to do with oxygen to the nerve endings. So the what causes the peripheral neuropathy or the, de the death of the nerves is that they lose oxygen. Nothing in your body survives without oxygen except for certain bacteria. And so when you start to lose your uh, oxygenation to those peripheral nerves, the ones all the way out at the tip, they, and this is what happened with diabetes too, the, the um, red blood cells get sticky and that's what's called A1C, the sticky red blood cells. They get stuck at the tip of your capillaries, at the tips of your toes and fingers. And then there's no oxygen there. Without oxygen, the tissue starts to die or necrose and rot. And gangrene is the ultimate um, process of that dysfunction. And so when we're looking at rege regenerating or rejuvenating the nerve function, we have to look at where oxygen is being starved from those body parts. And there's several things that can cause this. You can get, of course, pins and needles, feel like you're walking on nails. So some of the devastating symptoms that steal your life, trouble balancing, trouble walking, trouble sleeping, burning or freezing sensations, pins, needles, numbness, tingling, swelling, fatigue, heaviness, difficulty driving, difficulty feeling the pedals, tight bands or saran wrap feelings around your legs, sponge or marshmallow feeling on your socks on the bottom of your feet, loss of independence, unable to enjoy outdoor gardening, yard work, stop socializing or attending events, difficulty traveling on vacations, hiking on the beach or trails, uneven surfaces bother you, playing with your grandkids, attending sports, graduation difficulty, walking the dog, trouble riding in a car, trouble entertaining, cooking, cleaning, standing, falls, contemplations of falls, loss of inspiration for life, unable to enjoy retirement, mental, emotional impact, fear, anxiety, frustration, depression, concern of becoming a burden on the family. So this is some of the stuff that we are being um, plagued with when we're talking about peripheral neuropathy, which is an epidemic plaguing our country. And the some of the sim our treatments that I'll go into in a minute are only there to lessen the symptoms and do nothing to reverse the condition. However, we do have some pretty amazing things that when you put them together have been proven to help these things grow back. Take some time, depending on how long you have it, but it's worth the trip. 
Some of the main causes of peripheral neuropathy, of course, diabetes mellitus. 60% of the United States are diabetic or pre-diabetic. 30 to 40% will develop peripheral neuropathy. Chemotherapy, cancer is the second leading cause of death in the United States. Globally, 57% of cancer cases or 17 million will require chemotherapy. And that was in 2018. In 2040, 60, 26 million new cases will develop, 53% of which or 15 million will need chemotherapy. And again, 40 to 30 to 40 percent of those people will have peripheral neuropathy. Radiation, 50% of all cancer patients get radiation before, during, or after surgery. That's from Lancet Oncology Journal. Physical stresses, traumas, injuries to the spine, damaged nerves. That's something that we deal with chiropractically. Things like vitamin deficiencies, vitamin B, C, minerals. Toxic chemicals are huge. In 2021, uh, 200 or 627 people per 100,000 were reported poisoning. Autoimmune disease, the third most common disease in the United States are autoimmune conditions. That means your body's fighting itself. And by doing that, it's killing the nerves. Medications, cholesterol drugs we talked about, high blood pressure meds, and many more <clears throat> are contributing to your body's dysfunction. Chronic alcohol abuse, cigarette smoking, repetitive trauma, infections, inherited disorders, tumors, bone marrow disorders, and other diseases. Now, this is a real key. We're almost done here, but you cannot medicate yourself out of a chronic disease. You will not find a magic pill to get you out of a chronic disease. Now, a lot of times people are given off-label medications such as gabapentin to help with the symptoms of peripheral neuropathy. Gabapentin is a medication that was produced for seizures. So you're taking seizure medication and all it's doing is helping with your symptoms as your medical doctor should tell you. And if I'm wrong, let me know what they tell you. Lyrica, another one, an anti-seizure medication does not stop the progression of neuropathy and it has many side effects. Other medications that cover up, cover up symptoms, Cebalta, injections, epidurals, tarsal tunnel surgery, and um, things like even compression socks. Peripheral nerve, there's a degeneration scale that goes down to 100%. But when you take a look at the scale, and I have this on my um, show, you can watch it. It goes from healthy um, membranes around the, the nerves, and they're called myelin sheaths. And in there, surrounding something called the nerve axiom, is a ton of blood supply, keeping the blood healthy. When you have compression to that nerve, whether it's from a pinching, physical, chemical, or what have you, the sheath starts to die, and with that dies the blood vessels. Pretty soon, the nerve can no longer sustain itself, and you get destruction of the nerve itself. One of the things that we do is we take um, a thermographic imaging of your extremities, your feet or your hands, and they should all be yellow. A lot of times we'll see red, purple, or black at the extremity distances, which tells us that something's being cut off and weakened there. We want to see those tissues come back. More oxygen to the area, more blood flow is going to help regenerate that. And we know that the peripheral nerves can regenerate a millimeter a day. As long as you do more of the right things faster than the wrong things can destroy it. So we have to do more of the right things faster as you're, we're eliminating the wrong things. And, you know, a lot of times you have to really think hard about what you want to do with your life. And my story about my friend who so far hasn't made the decision to spend any money on his health because insurance won't pay for it to enjoy everything that he spent all his hard earned money for to build, you know, even though insurance didn't pay for the remodels or the cars and such. So your sensory loss, there's a different charts from um, about 15%, then it goes to 40, then up to 60. And beyond that, 70% nerve damage and on can be permanent, can be a much more difficult to turn around if we can. But this is like a hockey stick. It goes along and then it elevates very quickly. So the sooner you can catch it, the better. So there's a lot of researchers, over 2,000 papers and articles talking about therapies 
and that can uh, rebuild the, the, um, the peripheral nerves. Restoring blood flow to the peripheral nerves is huge. We can see something called angiogenesis, which is the growth of new blood vessels at a microscopic level when we give oxygen and various other regenerative um, functions to these nerves so that they can restore. And we retrain the nerves with biofeedback and we help reestablish oxygenation. You know, there's a lot of little things that you can do here and there. Like people will go do a 30, a 15 day detox and go, woohoo, I'm better. It's just barely scratching the surface. So the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. You have to do all of the stuff long enough to get your life back. And is it worth it? Question you've got to ask yourself. But we want to restore normal blood flow to the damaged tissue through the microcirculation, nitric oxide delivery to the cells. We want to retrain and re-educate proper nerve function. These principles are called neuroplasty, which you might want to look up. It means that the nerves can change, even the brain can change by biofeedback. Reduce toxins and inflammation. Detoxification technology is not a three or 11 day detox program, but it's probably going to be years, not months to get this back because it's been years, not months to get you where you're at. Balance your blood sugar and hormones so we can fix the cell to get well. Famous words of Dr. Dan Pompa. And, you know, it's uh, definitely worth doing. Um, I have a new book coming out soon called New Hope for Peripheral Neuropathy. And I will keep you informed. I'll probably be reading chapters out of it as we go. But, you know, it's up to you. You can make the change. You can make the difference. All you've got to do is draw a line in the sand and go, the past doesn't matter. What I've done in the past can't be changed. I may or may not have not learned lessons from it, but you know the buggy whoop's already been built and gone extinct. So what you need to do is go with a modern technology. And since we know that the medicines are not there to change your health, but to cover up the symptoms, if you are willing to do something different, then you might want to reach out to us we have a 25 step or questionnaire that you can fill out. And once you fill that out, send it in and we will uh, decide whether or not we think we can, should go any further to help you. So <clears throat> this is Dr. Duncan McCollum talking to you today about peripheral neuropathy, two words you never want to hear. And um, however, I want to let you know that we can do something about it. And right now, we're going to, I'm going to say sayonara, adios, and uh, we'll see you next week. And we're going out with Steve Funderburg's song, You Can Be Free, and I truly mean it and believe it. Good night. In my life, there came a time When I had to make my change You know the things just weren't right. I looked around for someone else to blame. I searched and searched and I reached down inside. And I knew when I found the light I can't hide.